this is more like a follow-up tour to the one I had early in the beginning of the year where I was uh, in German for six weeks from February to mid-March and the first one was funded by Culture Fund who paid for my mobility fund so they made sure that the journey could, could happen and I was being hosted by Afrique Avenue but this second one is very self-funded so I've paid for my own flights, travel insurance and visa for me to be able to to build up on relationships that I started building up during the last tour. I think it's quite important to go back to a place when people still remember you, when you're very fresh in their minds, than to go back after two years where they have started thinking, ah, who's Linda Gabriel? Mm, we remember her. But I think right now there's just been a space of two months, so which means almost everyone will still remember that performance. So I think time is now for me to go back and start building more relationships from there and more networking. So how I came about with this tour is being in a space where your art is appreciated. One. Two, when people go out for, for events. Three, when you actually get paid for the work that you're doing. So being away for six weeks for me was sort of inspiring that I really needed to spend more time in Europe to actually do my work and also at the same time it was very inspiring to meet artists from different countries like to perform with an artist from the US Kenny Wesley was really really gifted his music is as powerful and the way he uses his voice and getting to interact with the power from from the UK Musa Okonga where you know the brother is deep so sometimes you just know this is what your soul as a creative person needs to be in that space where it's very challenging very insightful very nurturing very like more you know when you know this is a good seed and this is where it can flourish so i decided that from my first tour the money that i would made i was going to save and pay for my own travel to make this second tour happened. So with the aid of Africa Avenue, they are also hosting me again. And I know and I knew now that this is where I want to be. So this is where I want to spend my next three months being on tour, meeting more people, doing workshops, collabor uh, collaborations. So I'm really excited that I've managed to put this tour together. And at the same time, I've been looking for my own gigs. So I'm my own manager, I'm my own booking agent. I sit on Google, I research performance venues in Berlin, I push my CV, I push my profile, theatre venues in Denmark, this is me, I'm going to be in Europe from this time to this time, can I perform at your venue? You get a yes, you get a no, you get come through, you get somebody who refer you to someone who they think is working with spoken ed and who might be very appreciative of the work that I'm doing. So when I've announced my tour dates, as because I've been very hard working, I've looked for my own gigs and I've been nagging friends, I've been nagging people, I've been talking to strangers, I've been sending randomly emails to say I'm a spoken word artist from Zimbabwe, can I perform at your venue and that's how, to sum it up, that's how my tour has come through. I've paid for my own flights, I've been looking for my own gigs and I'm still looking for more gigs because I have 90 days being in Europe. I was raised in a very small town which is for four kilometers outside Arari, the capital city of Zimbabwe, going west, it's called Norton. And I might be, maybe, I don't know well the history, but I could be the first female poet who is very active about poetry and who takes poetry as a profession. Um, and m the majority of my work really is being a voice for the voiceless my stories are about celebrating womanhood and bringing out the plight of women and when i say that it means everything that goes on around in the world of women so it includes the male the male the male pa partners as well so because i we are not an island where women live on their own so all these things i talk about in my work it's more everyday life but on a very like sad 
depressing note where issues to do with gender-based violence, issues to do with sexual abuse, issues to do with young girls not affording an education, issues to do with uh, sex work, issues to do with human rights. So a lot of my work is very, is very touching. I know on some instances I have made one or two people cry in my performances. So that's, that's a lot of the work that I deal with. But I try to tell these stories from my own perspective. So there's always an element of truth in my work or an experience that I've seen, that I've observed, or that I've also gone through, where if I see my neighbor being beaten by a husband, I've lived the experience. And it is in that moment that I'm supposed to write about that. So a lot of my work at some point you might experience that. For instance, early last year, there was a woman in one of the towns called Chitungweza who murdered her husband. And this, in one of my works, you realize I also have a poem of a woman who reflects on her life while she's in prison and she had murdered her husband. And the story is more, is more similar. This woman made as her husband, but you have to look into what would have caused that to happen. So, that's, that's what my work is about and I'm at a point with my work now where it has to be about conversations. I'm not happy with just performing and leaving the stage. I'm happy now to have a performance and to engage with the work. So for instance, if you're living in Canada and I perform, we have to have a conversation about our realities. Stuff happening in my poetry, does this auto happen to you? But if we just come and I perform and I leave the stage, I feel empty after the performance. I want people to have conversations around my work. I want to be able to answer some questions. Why did you write this poem? What inspired it? How come A, B, C, D in your poem? At that point, I think that's where my work has more value or depth when we can actually engage with the work. Because personally, I've been to poetry performances and I've always left wondering, what if I had a chance to speak with the poet to understand how they, how they wrote that poem, or what made them write the poem, or what were they going through. And most times I always feel there is something lacking. And so for me, what, I, what I'm designing now is a chance for conversation. So whenever I perform now, I'm very open to, have, to be having a conversation about my work. Hence, I've been designing what I call performance lectures, where I perform for university students and they get to engage with my work, whether from performance studies, gender and sexuality studies, women studies, human rights, psychology, sociology, I think even public health, somebody should find a space for them to fit into my work. If you're a feminist, how do you approach my work? If you're a theater student, how do you engage with my work? If you're dealing with human rights, and I'm talking about sex workers, how do you? So I think I'm at a point where I'm very comfortable with different people from different faculties engaging with my poetry. So when I got on the scene, um, the poetry scene, around 2005, Times were very exciting. There was some revolution going on. So we we're more like comrades doing our poetry for a cause. We wanted our voices to be heard. We we're being rebellious about the system. There were a lot of things that we were, we were not unhappy with. So I started off more as a as a protest poet, you know, being being macho and down with this, up with this, that type of a thing. And then we had People, poets like Comrade Fatso, we had Biko, we had a number of poets I really remember even from Blau Isle. There was, there was something exciting every month to look forward to. Poets were bringing in fresh work, new poems, dope stuff. Then I left the country early 2008 and I got exposed to, to the South African um, arts industry where poetry was vast from love poems to protest poems to just different things to encountering women who were, who were writing about being a black curvaceous woman to, to things to do with motherhood to things with where you, you address issues you're going through as a stepdaughter, as a stepson, as a half sister you know so South Africa exposed me to a whole lot of 
possibilities of what could be done with poetry, poetry as theater, you know, where poetry with music, poetry with dance, poetry with different art forms, and the power of collaborations. It was really in South Africa where we where I got to be exposed to all these possibilities that one could do with poetry. So for instance, I performed with seven powerful poets in South Africa and we, we collaborated on a show that we called Body of Words and it ran for three nights and in 2010, people had to pay a hundred rand to come to the show. It was seven of us and our work was interweaved so we each had a space to fill in, and I'm talking of women, Napo Mashiane, Lebo Mashile, Philippa, Yad Villiers, Misha Jenkins, Kanyima Gubani, Natalia Molebati, including myself. So these, these were very also interesting times for me, and going to university to study where I also make different art forms where you start looking at site specific performances where you know if I want to perform at this bus station what am I performing who's my target audience where I learned I mean breaking the form of conventional places of performance so hence you see now I can perform at a art gallery combining my work with visual art where I can make any space be a performance space where you have to come into um, a gallery space and poetry happens and also where I move with the audience so you might come to my show and there won't be seats because I want to be moving with you from one scene to another of my work then moving back home um, the scene has totally changed from what it used to be like eight years ago when I, when I got onto the scene right now I think the poetry scene is kind of boring in some sense because the poets I know some of them are still performing the same poems and the same style of performance has remained the same of course some have some you know the, the poets on the scene like Cynic who's really dope but he's also into hip-hop so he fuses his poetry with, with a bit there is uh, but there hasn't been much experiments of the work how men are fusing poetry with dance, how men are fusing poetry with soundscapes, how men are fusing poetry with a huge band playing live. This, I mean, they are people like, uh, poets like um, Upmost and Outspoken, who I know for years they've been playing with bands, but how many more have come out of that? Some poems, some poets, I know if I'm to listen to them, they'll be re reciting the same poem over and over again and nothing has really changed one of my inspirations is michael jackson if he was to perform the same song he would perform it differently so the set would have changed the lighting have changed maybe the way he enters on the stage with the same song would have changed and how many local poets are really doing that so you know stuff becomes stale so, and then you realize also many arts venues have been closing down in Zimbabwe and people who are organizing events, the way they organize events is also still the same like seven years ago. So sometimes for me there's nothing really new to look forward to to going to a poetry event because you know the same way it was being organized in 2007 is still the same way. So what happens now is it's if you have a new poet come on the scene, they'll go to the same event maybe for a year. When they realize that there's nothing changing about this poetry event, they might stop coming or they might get discouraged. And also, we are also at a point where not much is being done. So we don't have, let's say, 10 solid poetry events that happens in a month where, you know, every, every, every month or the first Saturday of the month, the second evening of the month or something where, you know, you can hop on and hop off from this poet event to another, to another, to another, to another. There isn't much happening. So when I got back last year, I really had to find my ground and say, hey, if you cannot wait for someone to organize poetry events, what if nobody organizes, then it means there's nothing that's gonna happen. So if, you, if, if you're in a space where no one is really doing much about your craft, I think you have to do that much for your own self 
to, to push your hustle. So last year I did something different where I had my show which I titled one-on-one -on -one poetry and conversations with Linda Gabriel where it meant every Tuesday we were performing at Maestro and I'd feature two or three artists in the evening and we did that for 23 weeks so it was a season on its own just like when you watch a series and you know there is The Good Wife season one with with 23 episodes so, so that's something that's something I did as well and you just have to be pushing your hustle and you just have to be looking at how can I do things differently or what will make my brand sell because imagine if I'm doing the same poems the same performance the same style over and over and over again who will come to my show or who would want to be associated with my brand because at the end of the day you just know oh we can recite the same poem with you all the time here and there it's good to throw in your old pieces but if you perform them differently if you give them a different feel the next time you see me with the band the next time i'm doing a collab the next time i'm doing something different so i think this is where our poetry should be going to places where we start experimenting what's the experiment that will come up with me if i am to collaborate with a musician where will poetry go if I'm to collaborate with a contemporary dancer? And I think that way, that also allows us to grow our audiences. If I take my work to a dancer, people who love dance get to be attracted to my work because I've gone to the medium that they love best. So then they say, oh, but we didn't know of Linda Gabriel. We now know of her because she has collaborated with a dancer. Maybe next time I do a show, they will come to my show saying, hey, but we watched your poetry was good. So we have to be exploring we have to be along to see movements where you know you can have like a quartet for let's say four sisters who are doing dog poetry and they're performing from one venue to another curating their own work than for us just to be individuals i've watched in south africa you have like six women producing a show and they go on tour with it you have four guys they're doing it in the U.S. We're poets. They start their own movements. They create their work. They rehearse. They write together. They perform together, and they make things happen. And from there, they can publish their own book, where you know four poets are featured in this book, and it's self-publishing. So I think at this point, we have what it takes as Zimbabwean poets to push our own hustle and to do it differently and to take our work to different mediums like now i'm a resident poet for zfm stereo where my poetry is will be read and be used at um at a show in the evening so as much as the dj is also playing music the audience who are also listening and who follow this a program they also get to hear my, my poetry so if people love my poetry and they hear me during the night i think it's something where i've taken my poetry just from stages to also radio so i think we have to be looking at how else can i make my work get there when i come back i want to look into how do i get my poetry on tv how do how do we do that how do we how do we become different how do we diversify how do we make a killer show how do we make an out of this world performance i think this is what we're supposed to be itching for you know th there's more that can be done and i think we have what it takes it's just for you to check your guts and believe in yourself and say hey i'm gonna do it so it's try it and test it you might try it test it and it works good for you if it doesn't find out why it didn't work and do it better correct your mistakes so it's always try and error who knows i mean in 2014 we did a show with a friend and we said this show is going for 10 bucks we sold 72 76 seats at ten dollars people came to our show at ten dollars in the middle of winter during world cup what did we do differently so it's how how do we package our shows concepts create concepts work on something build it up build up on that and do something different create the magic love your hustle love what you do man so my tour is starting on the 11th of may up to the 9th of august so if you're in europe i got a Schengen visa which allows me to be in 26 countries so all you need to do is you book me up for a gig a performance lecture at your university or a workshop with some of your students i'm very open to doing that i'm very also open for collaborations so if you've been looking for an african poet to collaborate with 
I'm your girl to go to. But also if you're home, you have to be watching, you have to be following me. We need, I need you to keep updated at what am I doing, what's new, what's cooking. So these are some of the things that you should look forward to from this tour. But also look out for my other collaborations that I'll be working with. I'll be working with a dancer and I'm going to do my EPK whilst I'm in Europe. And there will be lots of videos that I'll be sharing and lots of poetry to, to be made during this tour.